Hey guys, I hope you're staying safe in quarantine. Before we jump into my final Costa Rica vlog, I have a sponsor for today's video. This video is brought to you by Licked. Now, something I've been struggling with for years is finding music I can use in my videos. Even this week, I've been hit with over 40 copyright claims on old videos, which means I've lost monetization and I can't earn from those videos anymore. Licked is a digital platform helping content creators legally use well-known copyright music. Right now, YouTubers can't easily use commercial music because of copyright claims or even strikes and loss of monetization like I'm experiencing. Lick's mission is to sign all major record labels and house all commercial music on one platform so everyone can use it. By supporting Lick, you are supporting the artists whose music you license, and the more creators who start using the platform, Lick will be able to get a bigger library of music from the labels. So you can sign up with your YouTube channel's email account, and it's a pay-as-you-go model based on the average views you get. Click here to sign up and get your first track for free. Good morning guys, it's another day in Costa Rica. We have left the coast and we are heading to an amazing eco community today called Alegria. We've stopped off and we're gonna have a little look. Apparently there's some crocodiles in the river down here. Oh my gosh, they're massive. unexpected we literally just pulled over to use the toilet and get a coffee and um, had no idea that there was crocodiles here I also think that's the most and biggest crocodiles I've seen in the wild um, I've spotted a few before previously when we've been in the Amazon or in parts of Africa but not like a squad like that and huge freaking huge ones we were joking about what would happen if we fell in and I just don't think we'd have any chance of survival Thing be absolute game over. Back on the road. Let's get to Alegria. We have arrived at Alegria. We were greeted by three friendly dogs. We are here in this like crazy eco paradise. Check this out. Oh. What is this place? Wow. This is amazing. This is crazy. You could have such a cool sleep over here. Kai, come here. Say hi. Hi. Hey. Give a high five. 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 So we are just gathering. I think this is a combination of people that live here full time plus visitors because they've got a like visitor meal tonight, which is what we're here for. They're going to share, they're going to explain a bit about what this place is and hopefully we'll get to do a little tour. I'm super excited. I've been really admiring this main kind of town hall area that they've built, especially this toilet area. Check this. So. The walls are made from like mud and straw. They've got like a composting toilet. I think where they can, they recycle the water that is produced. There's no like proper plumbing and sewage. It's, it's instead, it's like filtered and then used to like water the plants and irrigation and stuff. And then it's just like, looks out into the forest. So Cam's brought his cameras down and we're gonna shoot an interview with Stephen. No, it's a wing bean, oh. but it's a purple wing bean. Are these spicy chilies? Yeah. Oh, I like a bit of spice. Uh, give me your name and your uh, title that you wanna go by. My name is Stephen Brooks and I'm an ethnobotanist. I study the relationship between humans and plants. It's so deep and vast and ancient and something so forgotten, so. What I do. So here it's called Alegria Village and it's 70 hectares and it's going to be about 120 more families including an elder village and a school and it's neighboring to the community that I co-founded 12 years ago which currently has 45 families living there from 22 countries. Currently have 45 children in the school that the parents co-created and what's so unique about what we're doing here 
is that when you look on Google Maps, like this is the greenest, most forested areas, the place where we, where we live. Development is actually regenerating the land. Like normally you would think, oh, if you're developing, you're destroying the land. But here, developing the land radically improves it. It's like totally against what everyone would think. I mean, the minute we bought this land, we just, we literally planted a thousand native trees along the borders. And you know, it's like, we need to start designing beyond our own borders. Like how come, where's your forest and where's mine and how can we connect them? So that's kind of what we've been doing here. And it's a pretty exciting, it's a pretty exciting concept that I think we're just beginning. You know, we got to break away from having neighbors that are random. Like how can we have neighbors that we have nothing in common with or don't even share values? Like. Why are our neighbors our neighbors only because they could buy the, the house next to us when they did? No, we need to get intentional and we need to, by living somewhere, we need to make the land radically better. We can't just sustain anymore. This whole idea of sustainable, sustainable is not good. If I said, oh yeah, Cameron, you know, how are you and your girlfriend doing? Oh, we're sustainable. I'd be like, oh God, I'm so sorry. You know, we need to regenerate. We need to come places and make it better. And it really feels like we're doing that here. Something that's super interesting about this eco community is that it's like in its infancy it like hasn't actually started yet they obviously bought the land they've started to reforest it but i don't think there's anyone or barely any people living on here yet because there's they're still building the infrastructure and uh, kind of figuring out how they're going to sell off the little plots and things so it's really cool to see this place at the beginning before it's truly flourishing but I love the vision and the values, so amazing. And whether we buy into this community and be a part of it, or whether we just are inspired to kind of do our own thing, we're learning a lot. Can you hear that? <laughs> Being in the middle of a dome has the craziest acoustic. Wait, I wonder whether it comes across on camera. I feel like it's gonna... Guys, can you hear... Hello, hello. Hello. Can, hello. Can you hear that versus you just standing over here? So I don't quite know what this dome is, but I'm assuming it's some kind of greenhouse or shaded area. They're growing loads of cool things. Look at these. interview with Steven. I showed you a few little clips, but basically he's saying that just trying to be sustainable isn't enough and that really we should be uh, regenerating stuff in our life, whether that's where we're living or the things we're doing, our activity. And uh, yeah, I just love that as a concept rather than just being sustainable, like actually regenerating. The plan, once this is a thriving community, is that there's gonna be so much abundance in the food that you're never gonna go hungry, that you're constantly gonna be able to pick from the fruit orchards, either from your own little plot or all the communal plots, even to the point where they're gonna be selling it locally, um, helping kind of locals invest in business and um, you know really supporting the local communities as well, like not taking from, but like helping with giving knowledge and trying to live in harmony and yeah just support the local area rather than just coming in and starting their own thing they're teaming up with a local ngo i forget the name of it but they have been doing a lot of polls and interviews with local people to find out okay what are the real needs here so this community will be helping regenerate this entire area and not just from a vegetation stance but also like the humanitarian stance of it as well like pouring into the local neighbors and really rebuilding um, in every way possible holistically so there's a lot to think about and i really love that they've been doing this and stephen's been doing this for decades and this is only one of many kind of eco communities that he started and is involved with when we end up either getting a place here or somewhere else that we can really um, draw from the wisdom that he's been gathering and this community have been gathering for years. I'm super excited, I am super excited. We are sitting down for dinner now. It's gonna be like a hundred and something people here, I think, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This is crazy. This is so cool.
we got a blast. What happened next? Thanks, bro. Yeah, welcome. I do want to talk a little about the cacao. The cacao was grown by the woman Yvette who works at Punta Mona, and this came from her property. Hey, everyone. Hey, 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 we left the eco community that we spent the day at. We have driven back to the coast because we're going to have a beach day tomorrow, and I'm super excited about that. Me and Rai are going to be chatting with others as well about our future and what that looks like and the inspiration that we got from this place. And yeah, catch you tomorrow. Peace out. Enjoy life. Live the adventure. Boom. <laughs>